Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV. Hello and welcome to Practical Motorhome TV, your one-stop shop for buying, owning and getting the most from your motor caravan. I'm Niall Hampton and on tonight's show we have a van load of motorhome goodness. Coming up, I have a look at the Auto Sleeper Fairford, a double lounge van conversion on the Peugeot Boxer. Next, I'm off to Somerset to visit the secluded Water Road Touring Park. And finally, we have a look at the cuddly Koala Elite 722 from Remore. Auto sleepers knows a thing or two about van conversions, which is just as well really, given that they account for around half of its total production. And they will be hoping that their success and momentum continues with the introduction of the Fairford, a twin lounge four berth model that rides on the Peugeot Boxer. So let's take a look. The Fairford's front lounge is quite distinctive, distinctive in the sense that it's been designed and optimized to enable views out of the side of the van with the sliding door open. The backrests here have been specifically built up for this purpose and there's plenty of good support but you can also use this in the classic dinette sense by spinning through 90 degrees where the back of this seat has been built up to offer another good backrest position. However agreeable this is though, and it all depends on how lovely the view is, which I'm sure will be most of the time, this isn't the only place in the Fairford where you can relax in style and comfort. There's also this area, the super sociable rear lounge, which has parallel seating and no end of natural illumination from windows on a roof light, plus the backup of LEDs. It also has the ability to put a couple of cocktail tables up here in the floor, which are ingeniously stored under the windows. But best of all, at night time, you can make up a whopping double bed and leave it as your bedroom. But it's not the only place to sleep in the Fairford. Now this galley really does have a lot going for it, least of all this enormous work surface. Who needs the cooker lid and the sink lid when you've got this much real estate to work with? And looking at the equipment angle, we have three gas burners here, combination oven and grill, microwave oven, and underneath that a handy extractor fan, a fridge with separate freezer compartment, and also 230 volt sockets rotated through 90 degrees for maximum practicality, plus the mounting connections for a television. So you can plonk one down here, on the worktop. And opposite the kitchen you'll find the washroom which while compact definitely fits lots in. I particularly like this sliding shower which goes up and down on this rail so you can move it out of the way when you want to get under the spray. Hey that almost rhymes. Elsewhere you'll find double drain holes in the door, a swivel loo, a light up top and a timbre door. Another feature of note is this clever wardrobe up here next to the front dinette. I say clever because it has two doors, one on the side here and one round the front. And the reason for this is simple. If you extend the bed into the gangway, then you're gonna be goosed if you try and getting anything out of this wardrobe. So Auto Sleepers has cleverly put another door in the front there. There are nine overhead lockers to choose from in the Fairford, plus two of the seat boxes have very serviceable storage areas. So you're gonna to have to work quite hard to get up to this van's payload. The Fairford's cab is a pleasant place to be, thanks in no small part to the 150 BHP engine upgrade fitted as standard to this vehicle. Other features of note include a DAB radio with connection for your mobile devices via Bluetooth and USB and fitted as part of the premium pack of options which will set you back two and a half thousand pounds. You can have cruise control, a colour reversing camera, air top suspension and a wind out canopy awning. The Auto Sleeper Fairford will cost you £51,700 on the road, which seems like pretty good value for money when you consider the build quality plus the fact there are many features we haven't even had time to look at. It's 6.36 metres long, so you'll need a decent front drive to be able to accommodate it, but at 3,500 kilograms, anyone in the family can drive it, should you choose to lend them the keys, that is. Now, the end lounge can be left as the main bedroom, and you also have the benefit of opening the side door and using this new lounge to be able to savour a view. And who can save Fairford than that? Naturally self-contained by its idyllic topography, this gem of a site in Somerset could be the perfect place to take a break and get away from it all. 38 all-weather touring pitches are set in beautifully landscaped grounds with trees and shrubs providing a good level of privacy. 
All pitches are within a short distance of the sparkling river Tone, where you can fish. We're Water Road Touring Park, based in Somerset, near the Devonshire border. We're a caravan park, adults only, with motorhomes, caravans, tents. We have 38 pitches, hard standing pitches, and two super pitches. The super pitches being extra large using the grass as well. We have three tent pitches and we also have 26 fully serviced pitches, that's water and grey waste. Site facilities are headquartered in a barn to the south of the site, where you'll find an info centre, toilet, showers, disabled wet room, laundry room, payphone, freezer, microwave, coffee machine and computer. But it's not just the quality of the facilities and the location near Exmoor that make Waterrow such a good site. It's the warm welcome visitors receive from owners Lynette and Jamie Cook and the small touches, such as the regular painting courses available, that really impress a lot. We're a five-star graded park. All of our facilities are in our barn, which is quite a unique, very warm, cosy, all undercover. The park's on eight acres of land, some of which is woodland, which is our woodland. So we have areas for dogs to walk. There's plenty of wildlife here. We have a David Bellamy Gold Award. Also in close proximity, we have three National Trust parks, Dunster Castle, Killerton, and Knights Hayes. There are two cider manufacturers nearby. There's farm shops, and then you could also go shopping in Exeter. This is the first time on uh, Water Row. We've never been here before. Uh, most enjoyable site. Facilities are absolutely wonderful. Showers, toilets, warm, friendly staff, friendly people introduced ourselves to where we've got to go and uh, we find ourselves very welcome here and definitely certainly come again. Should I offer you any top tips for your stay here at Waterrow? First of all I recommend you bring your walking boots because the walks can be quite muddy. Secondly if you fancy your chances as a photographer bring your camera and try and capture some of our lovely wildlife and finally the local eateries are very very good. The Rock Inn is in walking distance. One of the popular French brands, three new vans for the 2016 season, shares its model name with a hugely successful Boeing airliner. And where the 737 is the mainstay of budget fleets around the world, you too can have an affordable version of the Chausson 737 in the most excellent Flash guise, which is based on the Ford Transit. Flash models ride on white cabs, which is just as well when you consider the overall colour theme for the rest of the vehicle. Storage options abound. Look at that massive locker on the rear there plus another hatch next to it which offers underbed storage. And on the other side of the vehicle, you get a secret compartment no less. Don't worry, it's not big enough for any stowaways you may encounter on the way back from the channel ports. And further forward, you'll find a combined service point, the kind of thing you find on an expensive German motorhome. Here it puts the electrical equipment, including the MCU, next to the fresh water tank. The 737 is a five berth with four belted travel seats, although you can add a fifth one as an option. The lounge is a very sociable space with a half to net and you can rotate the cab seats to bring extra people into the party. Plenty of natural light abounds from side windows or the cab skylight and you have LED spotlights in reserve. Now the cab is a great place to be as well. It's very car-like in design, a very ergonomic feel and the 2.2 litre engine sounds very smooth and it also has a very car-like transmission as well. It really doesn't feel like you're driving a commercial vehicle. The kitchen is small, but you still get a reasonable amount of kit. Three gas burners, a sink, a grill down below, and opposite a fridge with separate freezer compartment lead the specification chart. Storage is pretty good too, the highlight of which is this slide-out apothecary style rack, which is an ingenious use of the available space. Another distinctive feature is the fact that you can use diesel to power the Trumu Combi heating system. The logic being, you may be running out of gas, but you certainly won't be running out of diesel if you play your cards right. It's also great, of course, if you can't access electric hookup. The open plan bedroom towards the rear of the van is a great use of space. It feels enormous in here. There's a wardrobe at the foot of one of the beds, so obviously you keep your head at this end where the plastic mouldings are. But these beds look comfortable, pretty wide, and there's great storage on both sides courtesy of overhead lockers. And if you're wondering where the extra berths are, simple. There's a drop down double above the lounge and underneath that, by dropping the table and inserting a few cushions, you have an extra single sleeping space. The end washroom is split across the van. In the rear near side corner, you'll find a shower compartment with double drain holes, just in case you haven't leveled the van properly. On the other side, you'll find an enormous locker 
that has three shells in it, plus access from outside the vehicle from that rather large hatch we mentioned at the beginning of the review. There's also a swivel loo, and in the middle, a vanity unit, plus a very natty shaped sink on top. The Chausson Flash 737 starts at £43,390 on the road. Don't forget, if you want to spend an extra 2000 and have it on a Fiat Ducato, then that option is available too. If it was my money though, I'd be on one of these. With an MTPLM of 3,500 kilograms, anyone in the family can drive it. And with a very respectable payload of 450 kilograms, there are plenty of places, as we've seen, to hide all your touring kit. Now, Chausson knows a thing or two about making motorhomes. Not for nothing are they the number one imported brand into the UK. And just to stretch that parallel with Boeing a little bit further, who needs one of their 737s when you can have plenty of Blue Sky Adventures with one of these? Are you in the market for a super value family coach built that offers massive amount of sleeping berths, perhaps a base vehicle that you're quite unfamiliar with? And how about that base vehicle having rear wheel drive? Well, the Remor Koala Elite 722 ticks all those boxes and a few more as we'll soon find out. Remor is an Italian brand based in Tuscany. They have a great reputation for value for money motorhomes and the Euro exchange rate at the moment means that they're even better value in the UK. Now this van is based on the Renault Master 125 BHP 2.3 litre engine. A very different experience from the Fiat Ducato cab-wise and drive-wise. And because it's rear-wheel drive, you can stuff that massive rear garage absolutely full of kit and you'll always be able to get off your campsite pitch. This massive dinner is absolutely excellent. As you can see, you could probably get six or seven people in here very comfortably indeed. There's plenty of seating arrangements from the jump seat to the full seat over here, the two traveling seats and the two cab seats rotated. Plenty of space to stretch out and relax. And at night times, this whole area converts into a massive double bed of which there are three in total in this van. Just feel the width in this midships galley. It's absolutely phenomenal. Three gas burners, combination oven and grill, compressor fridge, deep sink, and plenty of storage solutions from the overhead lockers to a cutlery drawer and a pull-out cupboard down below. But I reckon there's a further application of this van should you take it to a festival in the summer. You could use it as a fast food outlet just by opening this massive kitchen window and serving all your friends and family through the hatch. Now saving space really isn't an issue in this particular van. You get a separate shower compartment with a fantastic shower head. You also get a swivel loo and a proper vanity unit with a semi-circular chrome sink. Now the master bedroom is a very well appointed space as you can see. Just look at this mattress, very comfortable indeed. You can get a lot of people in there, but in reality it's only for two. Storage solutions near the bed are pretty well developed too. There's a wardrobe here, a little shelf, and also access to the garage under the vehicle. Ah. Oh, hello Niall. It's very spacious down here. You could get a whole family inside. Well, not now Al, thanks, but we're a bit busy. And handily, this voluminous storage space is actually accessible from both sides of the vehicle. Oh, Al, I'd almost forgotten you were in there. Thanks very much, Niall. I've got a caravan to see. OK, see ya. This Remor Koala Elite 722 will cost you £41,795 on the road. It's our reigning budget motorhome of the year, so we know exactly what cracking value for money it is. The MTPLM is 3,500 kilograms, with a payload just south of 500 kilograms. So anyone in the family can drive it on a standard car license. Now, I'm no marketing expert, but if it was what I did for a living, then my contribution for this van would be re more for your money. Hi, I'm Dave Newell. Welcome to our workshop. Today, we're going to have a quick look at what you can do to minimise the chances of an MOT failure. First of all, let's go to the engine bay. First things first, check and top up your windscreen washer bottle. You'd be surprised how many vehicles fail the MOT simply because there's no fluid in the bottle. The next item will be the wipers. Check for splits, tears, any damage to the blades. Check them both and check that they clear the windscreen effectively when they're working. Next is the instrument pan. Any of these warning lights that stay on once the engine's running are an instant fail. And there we go. Next up is the lights. It's 
So we're checking that the lights are all working. So we're checking for side lights, headlights, indicators, side repeaters, and don't forget to check the main beam works. We also need to check the brake lights. If you're working on your own, this can be difficult. I have a little trick. That's now put the brake lights on, and we can go to the rear of the vehicle and check all the rear lights. So at the rear, we're checking for side lights, and brake lights, indicators, fog lights, high level centre brake light if you've got one fitted, and number plate lights. Reverse lights are not part of the MOT. The only remaining thing we can check now is the tyres. So we're looking for damage to the sidewalls, any cracks or cuts. We're looking at the tread condition. So we're looking for even wear across the tread width. These three main grooves all need to be approximately the same depth. Minimum tread depth is 1.6 millimetres. That's what that marker there shows. As long as the tread is higher than that, it's legal. Also, make sure that the tyre is properly inflated. So that's about as much as you can check for yourself, but it's worth spending 10 minutes going around, check the vehicle beforehand. It would be silly to get a failure for the sake of an empty windscreen washer bottle. Hopefully this helps you get through an MOT. See you next time. Marquis Majestic is a dealer special edition range of best-selling motorhomes based on Eldis models. It allows you to trade up to the massed ranks of motor caravan nobility for a small premium over the factory fresh price. Think of it like buying a title with a few extra baubles thrown in. Now at numbering 14 strong, there's no particular danger in this line of succession going awry anytime soon. And one of the two new models added for 2016 is the 254, a 7.4 metre long four berth with four belted travel seats. But without any further ado, let's get inside and have a quick peerage at what's on offer. So what do we mean by a dealer's special edition range? Well, Marquis Leisure takes the factory version and fits a few extra bells and whistles. And it clearly knows what it's doing because this is the best selling dealer's special edition range in the UK. If comparing it to the Eldis Encore version on which this van is based, you will notice that the soft furnishing scheme is different. This one has more of a pattern and will hide the dirt better. The carpets are different too. You don't get the brown ones, you get graphite instead, which Marcus has specified, and they even have a stitched in logo. How cool is that? And just talking about the layout for a minute, this is a parallel lounge that will be very familiar to anyone who's had a touring caravan. And also there are two belted travel seats lurking underneath of the fold up variety, which means that you have two belts in the front, two belts in the back and four berths overall. So there's a belt for every berth. Now, one thing that isn't different is the cabinet work. It's the same version as used in Eldis. And I think it's quite attractive with that little relief and those chrome handles, a nice touch indeed. You'll also find some updates in the cab, including ESP with traction control, and you also get cruise control allied to the six-speed manual gearbox on the Peugeot Boxer. Now here it has the 150 bhp engine output, making this van very lively on the road and very rewarding to drive too. Other things of note is a head unit that has a CD slot. So if you're not one of these people that's embraced the massive headlong rush into non-physical media, then this cab is a great place to be for you. There's also USB and Bluetooth connectivity and you also get automatic climate control so you can dial in the numbers and you don't have to use those rotary dials. Another really good touch. And just in case you're not feeling right at home here, you get the Marquis Coronet logo on the top of the stereo, which matches the techno infills on the dashboard around the ventilation. The 254's galley makes a great use of the space and I like the amount of room around it across the gangway of the vehicle. You get dual fuel hobs, a separate oven and grill, microwave oven, and check that out for a really deep functional sink, a really good touch. Two overhead lockers in a different relief to the rest of the overhead lockers in the van and racking in there for crockery. And behind me, a skinny fridge, bang on trend for the 2016 season. It saves space and looks the business too. And if for some reason you may find yourself running out of worktop, then a handy extension is available down here. A transverse island bed offers comfort and convenience in equal measure. Comfort because you can get out of the bed in the middle of the night to do your ablutions without disturbing your partner. And you have to say that's also very convenient. Now there's a couple of other really interesting things about this particular bed. If you pull it out at the bottom here, 
and it will come towards you. What you can then do is tip this cushion up here and you've extended the bed. How's that? You can leave it in this position for night times and during the day when you want to get round the end of the vehicle to check the ermine surrounds on your windows, then what better way of doing it than that? And if you're wondering where the other two beds are, because I mentioned this is a four berth, there's another two available in the lounge brought out by putting the slats into the middle of the gangway and rearranging the cushions in time-honoured fashion. And if you're concerned about privacy, then don't worry, Eldis has thought of that. There's a folding concertina blind that pulls all the way across and partitions the front of the van from the back. The 254's offside washroom is of the space-saving variety. It's actually split into two zones. The loo floor actually forms the shower tray. Aside from that, you get a half-length mirror wrapped around the vanity unit a separate shower attachment and also a curtain to keep spray at bay. At £53,758 on the road, the Marquis Majestic 254 will be a very noble choice of vehicle in my view. We've looked at all the spec bumps and upgrades that Marquis has put on this vehicle and there are two that we haven't even mentioned yet. The wind-out canopy awning and the reversing camera fitted to the back of the vehicle that replays from a screen overlaid on the rear view mirror. All very good stuff. So if you're in the market for something that has all these extra bells and whistles, it's a pretty good place to start your search. But if you don't want to spend the £5,100 premium over the Eldis Encore 254, then of course that option is available to you. But I would have thought that the engine upgrade plus the other bells and whistles make a fairly compelling case for going the majestic route. Let's look at some other numbers we haven't mentioned yet. The MTPLM is three and a half thousand kilograms, so anyone in the family can drive this van on a standard car license. And the payload is north of 400 kilograms, so plenty of room for your touring kit and caboodle. So all in all, I'd say this is a fairly noble choice of van. For the royal family member who wants to go out and see their subjects and who's upwardly mobile and expects a certain amount of comfort and convenience on the road. So why settle for anything else when you can have one of these, your very own stately home on wheels? Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's show, but I hope you agree it's been far more swing than roundabout. We'll be back soon with some more motorhome and campsite reviews and some technical expert advice from our resident Diamond Dave. Until next time then, you can keep in touch with us via Facebook, Twitter or practicalmotorhome.com. Until we meet again, tour safe and take care. Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Motorhome TV.